personal injury court. This is a matter of Taylor versus Martin. It's my understanding from looking at the documents that you all filed with the court that, Mr. Taylor, you filed this lawsuit for injuries that you sustained when Ms. Martin struck you with her car when you were trying to cross the street. Uh, you are seeking $5,000 in medical costs, $15,000 in lost wages, and $50,000 for pain and suffering for a total recovery of $70,000. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. And Ms. Martin, your uh, position in this case is that you didn't see him and you hit him. You didn't really have a choice, but it's not your fault. Is that yes. correct? Yes, Your Honor. Now, you know what's odd about this case is that there's a 911 tape in the file. I think we ought to hear it now. 911 with the other emergency? Yes, we just have a man just run up butt naked. I mean, he's next. Okay, we'll get him out there. They don't want to leave. They got no choice. They'll run him over. I'm just standing about 50 yards away, buddy. They don't, the people don't want to move enough. He's butt naked. I got him. Now, Mr. Taylor, you were that butt naked guy, right? Yes, Your Honor, I was. Okay, well, let's get into the legal sauce. Tell me how this thing happened. Your Honor, it's honestly a crazy story. I love the beach. I love the water. I love to unwind after a stressful work week. Okay, so on this day, you're trying to go to the beach. Yes, Your Honor. So what happened? I got to the beach. I was swimming. It was a beautiful day out. All of a sudden, a riptide came up, stuck me right under. My swimming trunks ripped right off. Okay. Okay, now things got interesting, right? Yeah. Okay. It was a full-blown panic. So then what do you do? Once I got out of the water, I stepped foot on that shore. I had one thing in mind, and that only thing was I need to get home. Now, how far away from home are you now that you're standing on the beach with the family assets Two blocks out? away. And, Ms. Martin, you remember this day that your car struck Mr. Taylor? Uh, yes, Your Honor. And, and what were you doing that day that uh, put you out on the road? Your Honor, I was going to choir practice. For 25 years, I've been going to choir practice. I know the road. Taking this same route? Every day, Your You Honor. know this Nothing. route like the back of your back hand? Back of my hand. Nothing different. So, Mr. Taylor, you are standing on the beach. You're trying to figure out, how do I get from point A to home butt naked? Yes, Your Honor. <laughs> I'm a firefighter. I have to be held up to a certain standard. Yes, sir. I can't let people see me like that. So, the first thing that crossed my mind was, I have to get out of here fast. I was running, took the alleyway, Thank goodness there was a garbage can there. I looked inside that garbage can, and thank God that there was a paper plate. Yeah. A wise person once said that the mother of creativity is necessity. So this was necessary, right? This was necessary. In all seriousness, I, yes, was, I was scared. I just wanted to get home. So I proceeded to take that plate, and I put it over my private areas. OK, and then what did you do? I ran. Now, Ms. Martin, you can understand that kind of panic trying to get home, right? I understand, when, Your Honor. When you're butt naked, right? I, underst I understand the urgency. But he just running and dashing in the middle of the street, he didn't look left, he didn't look right. You know, Ms. Martin, that's a good point. You know, Mr. He... Taylor, tell me this. You get the plate, you start running, now what happens? I'm running, butt naked. People should see me, right? Okay. It's a two-lane spot. Yes, sir. The first lane, I have my hand up. The rest of the traffic slows down. That's when I proceed to go into and, the front. And, and you're this way with the plate on the spot. OK. Yes, Your Honor. All right, good deal. She came speeding. I didn't even have time to see her. I couldn't hurdle over not or nothing. Bam! That hit me, set me 20 feet in the air. That's when I came crashing down, landed right on my tailbone. Now, I broke my coccyx. Now, Miss Martin, you see that this young man was hurt. Yes, Your Honor. I imagine some little piece of your heart goes out to him. Yes, Your Honor. Again, it's, it's not my fault. I didn't have enough time to react. Because she was so speeding. I so was not speeding. Mr. Taylor, you submitted a, a diagram. Yes, right? Your Honor. Could you come over here to the monitor and, and explain how this happened? Yes, Your Honor. Okay, now, what, probably obvious, but what's you? This man holding the plate is me, Your Honor. Uh, describe what happens. Back here would be where the beach is, Your Honor. Okay. This green area down here would be where freedom is. That is my house down there. Okay. Now, the only thing stopping me from getting to my destination was this road. So this is a little bit like a human game of Frogger, right? <laughs> 
if you want to put it that way. Okay, and you were the frog. Yes, the, you are. The butt naked frog. Unfortunately. That's right. Okay, then let's take a peek at it. This is me. I wave my hand. Car stops. Next car. Boom. 20 feet in the air. And it uh, knocked, knocked the plate right it off the screen, the right? So See, Your Honor, he just bumped I'm my most front of vulnerable. Miss Martin, that red car is you, right? That's correct, Your and, Honor. And Mr. Taylor, that blue car is the one that saw you and stopped. Yes, Your Honor, she was God sent. Okay, and, and Miss Martin, you didn't, you didn't I, see him I, until you hit him. I did not. I, I didn't have time to react. He came out like a bat out of hell from well, nowhere. What were you I looking at? He had things jingling and tingling, and I was like, I, I was surprised. Well, no you shot. saw something, right? I mean, I mean, I was going to choir practice. I'm a church fearing woman, and this man, he just, I was just in shock. Almost, now, I almost uh, had a heart attack. So you didn't see him until you hit him? Right? Until I, it was too late to do anything. Now, he said you were going too fast. Do you I, know how fast you were going? I was obeying the speed limit. It was 25 miles an hour. And you know that. And I know that. And you're sure I of never it. had a speed. I've been driving for 40 years. A clean record, Your Honor. What's never. always the case is somebody's wrong. You may return to the podium. Thank you, Your Honor. So, Mr. Taylor, tell me specifically what your injuries were. I uh, busted my coccyx which for people who don't know is my tailbone. And, and how has that affected you? Let's just start off by saying three months out of work, um, excruciating pain, medicine, it doesn't help, loss of, of wages. And then the biggest part for me was not being able to physically, you know, pick up my child, play with my daughter. Well, this, this and, takes me back. And that, I mean, I... and that was, I cherish that most in the world. This, this takes me back. Yes, I, I, I hurt my coccyx when I was uh, playing football in college. So, so it, you understand. It hurt pain. standing, yeah. sneezing. Yes. I got hit and it was, it kind of shut my legs down. It was so bad. Yes. Uh, but it wasn't over that day. Is that how it's been for you? It's constant pain. Since she struck me with her vehicle, it's been so miserable that I have to sit on this. It's like a donut. You have to put your butt Listen, in Listen, that, that's it, an old friend of mine, yeah. believe me. I, ha I even have to take it to the bathroom. Now, can you imagine taking this to the bathroom? Oh, I don't have to imagine. I did. Yeah, so you understand. Yes, sir. Miserable. How has this affected you in terms of how you feel? Your head, your mind? Well, I'm going to be honest, and that is the depression. It really started to sink in. Um, it's affected me every aspect of my life. Why isn't this your fault? Your car hit. Well, first of all, Your Honor, he was not in the crosswalk. And, you know, Ms. Martin, that's a good point. You know, Mr. He... Taylor, tell me this. I see that on this diagram that you prepared, this, this animation, uh, you're not in the crosswalk. Mm -hmm. Now, yes, Your Honor. Uh, you could have gone down to the crosswalk, right? I just wanted to get home as, fa as quickly as possible. You know, lawyers call the crosswalk the zone of safety. That's right. Right? Yes, Your Honor. Uh, was there anything that prevented you from going into the crosswalk, even running with a plate over your uh, jewels? I was very embarrassed, and I just wanted to get home as quick as possible. And, Miss Martin, your car struck him. I mean, that's undisputed, right? What were you looking at? I was listening to my Christian music, Jesus Takes the Wheel, and he did because, <laughs> you know... Well, I, I know Jesus had your ears. Who had your eyes? Your Honor, I, I had my eyes glued to the road. He, as I said, it was on impact. He just jumped out like a deer out of nowhere. He should have been in a crosswalk. Miss Martin, you know what I want you to do for me? I want you to go over to the plasma screen, and we're going to restart this animation. I want you to tell me what's happening here from your perspective. Now, we're going to slowly roll it. Now, tell me how this happened. Well, I was driving. I wasn't speeding. But when he came out, it was just too late. So I had you, no time to react. You but didn't know he was there until I, his bear behind hit your car. Till I saw things. Yes, Your Honor. She's been driving this road 20 years, like she said. She knows. I know the, wor the you, road back you, and front. You should for be driving five miles years. Miles for 25 the years. Y'all doing you it again. Been, you shouldn't have been I, in the middle of I wish of the I was that talented to hear both of you. Mr. Taylor. Yes, Your Honor. Now, you keep saying that she should have watched out. She should have watched out. Shouldn't you have been looking out for her, too? Yes, Your Honor, but at that and, time... And that crosswalk is just 10 feet away now. It's right there. You were completely right, right Your there. Honor. Different conversation if you're in the crosswalk, right? Yes, Your Honor. So, Ms. Martin, you may go back to your podium. 
Mr. Taylor, I want to understand the extent of your injuries from a medical perspective. So this court is going to call Dr. Samantha Brown Parks. Sheriff Matt, could you please escort the doctor in? Yes, sir. Hello, doctor. Hi, Judge. For the record, would you state your name? Uh, Dr. Samantha Brown Parks. Doctor, I need to understand the extent and nature of this tailbone injury. Could you explain that to me? Absolutely. So when the defendant hit Mr. Taylor, the force of the impact drove him up into the air, and when he fell into the ground, all of that force was felt at the bottom of his spine and his tailbone, or his coccyx. And, and where exactly is the coccyx? So the coccyx is this triangular bony portion at the bottom of the spine, right below the sacrum. We need this as the center point for walking, for sitting, for standing, for bowel movements, for sexual function. So by cracking it, you can have pain with all of those normal activities that we take for granted. How, how do you treat it? So unfortunately, coccidinia, or pain of the coccyx, unless it is broken all the way off, we don't normally do surgery. It's left to repair on its own um, over a long period of time. Thank you, doctor. You're welcome. You may be excused. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Mr. Taylor, I see on the list that you have brought a witness. Yes, Your Honor. And I'd like to hear from your witness. Yes, Your Honor. Sir, step up to the podium, please. For the record, tell me your name. My name is Jeremiah Graves. And Mr. Graves, what's your role in all this? My role is I saw everything happen, Your Honor. Well, how, how were you in a position to see it? Uh, I'm a hot dog vendor on the street that the accident occurred. Okay, so the uh, diagram that had a little umbrella. Yes, sir, that's me. Okay, so you're standing there. What do you see? Um, it's just a, a, a normal day on the job, serving hot dogs right off the beach. And um, I really noticed a really fast red car coming. And I thought that was strange because being so close to the beach, people usually don't drive very fast, a lot of kids. Is that the red car you're talking about that yes, was going yes, fast? Yes, Your Honor, that is the red car. Did you get a clear look at the driver? Absolutely, yes, sir. And what did you see? I saw this woman right here. And what was she doing? It was strange because when she got close enough for me to see her face, I noticed that she was locked eyes with me. She's On looking at you. I was yeah. not looking at him, Your Honor. Well, Miss Martin, you understand that if you were looking at him, there's no way you could see Mr. Taylor, right? Correct. If you were looking at him. But you, you say she was looking at you. Absolutely. And then what Clear happened? Day. So I look to my right to see maybe if anyone's walking, tell him, you know, get out of the way. When I see Mr. Taylor running naked, other cars stopped for him, but she did not. Mr. Graves, do you think in the way this happened that that blue car blocked her view at least for a while? Uh, that's possible, sir, but like I said, she was looking at me for at least two to three seconds directly in the eyes while she was driving, so. So, Mr. Graves, thank you. You may return to your seat. Thank you. <laughs> Ms. Martin, if this is not your fault, why do you think he filed this case? Because he's a freeloading scammer. Your, your Honor. Now, that, now that's strong. Why do you think that? That he's because, a freeloading Honor, scammer? This is not his first lawsuit. I want to present this to the court. I have evidence he had filed two years ago. He had filed um, cases in a court. He claimed he got hit by a car. You've got a, so you've got this a is folder a scamming in your hand. freeloader, Your Honor. Your Honor. He has done Sheriff this before. Matt, you he probably that folder. intended to rip off his. Yes, go ahead. Your Honor. Mr. Taylor. Uh, you, you've been uh, suing folks in the past? I was having some bad luck, Your Honor. Those cases bad luck are winning, that's what. Those is. cases are irrelevant. They shouldn't even be brought up. Miss Martin, I want to give you a legal lesson. I allowed you to put in these prior lawsuits to present these to me, but the law really doesn't allow me to consider these because it does not matter on this day. While interesting, it does not tend on my decision, and thus, it, it just is not really relevant. It's not really relevant. So I'm not gonna take it into consideration. But I do appreciate you supplying it to me. Mr. Taylor, Ms. Martin, I've heard everything I need to hear, and I'm ready to make my decision. <laughs> In every personal injury case, there are three elements. Mr. Taylor, you've got to prove that Ms. Martin was wrong and that her wrong caused your injuries. Here, you weren't using the crosswalk. You had an opportunity to use the crosswalk. And Ms. Martin, you were driving distracted. It's difficult for me when you're not able to explain what you were looking at if you weren't looking at the road. 
So, Mr. Taylor, you came into this court suing for $5,000 for your medical costs, $15,000 for your lost wages, and $50,000 for pain and suffering for a total of $70,000. The law requires that I compare your responsibility. That's comparative negligence. You were wrong, but you were also wrong. Here, I find that you are 25% responsible, I find in your favor, in the amount of $52,500 and against Ms. Martin. That is my final decision. Wow. And this court is adjourned. <laughs> Our attorneys across America just viewed this case for the first time. Let's hear what Leonard Lundy has to say. The defendant lost this case because she violated one of the major rules of the road. She failed to keep her eyes on the road ahead. She may have been distracted by the crosswalk streaker, but it did not excuse her obligation to focus on the road ahead and drive at a safe speed to stop her car in a timely fashion. Distracted driving is dangerous driving.